10 Great Mansions in New York New York City, also known as the City of New York, is America's biggest and most significant metropolis. It's the country's most populous and international city. It's also the most ethnically diverse, religiously diverse, commercially driven, famously congested, and, in many people's eyes, most attractive urban center. New York has been the most extensive and prosperous American city for the past two centuries. Through its port, the United States received more than half of all people and goods entering the country. And as a result of this flow of trade, change is a constant in urban life. From very early times, there have been many people who called them lords and ladies. These people who belonged to the highest class at the time had luxurious houses. Today, we're going to see some of the greatest. Number 10. The Otto Kahn and James Burden Mansions The Otto Kahn and James Burden Mansions, located on 91st Street and 5th Avenue respectively, are some of the finest examples of Italian Renaissance and Beaux-Arts architecture. Otto Kahn commissioned architects C. P. H. Gilbert and J. Armstrong Stenhouse to design and build his mansion overlooking Central Park in 1918. The Otto Kahn mansion was the residence of Otto Kahn and his wife, Adelaide Wolf. They both were art enthusiasts who regularly hosted great musical performances at the mansion. The James Burden mansion has a grand spiral staircase, a famous rotunda, and a Tiffany stained glass skylight window. The lower, middle, and upper schools of the Sacred Heart are now housed in the two mansions, which the Convent of the Sacred Heart purchased in 1940. Number 9. Seward House Mansion Built by the Miller family in 1816, this became William H. Seward's house when he married Elijah Miller's daughter, Frances. Seward became a United States Senator, New York State Governor, and the United States Secretary of State. The house is now a museum dedicated to the lives and times of Mr. and Mrs. Seward. Mrs. Seward once harbored runaway slaves in the mansion's basement while Mr. Seward was away on business. Many poor slaves who used this route to escape to Canada are said to have carried memories of its warmth and cheer to their graves. The old Seward kitchen is said to have been one of the most well-liked stations of the Underground Railroad. Number 8. Phelps Mansion the Gilded Age in America, created by American author Mark Twain, lasted from 1870 to 1900. During this time, Sherman D. Phelps and his family built their house at 191 Court Street, which was once known as Mansion Row. This house, which is currently the last of its neighbors, has been preserved and is available for public tours, exhibitions, educational programs, and events. Isaac G. Perry designed this three-story Second Empire-style extravagance and worked as the building's last lead architect on the New York State Capitol. Historic artwork, rare antiques, period furniture, and unique woodwork adorn the mansion. Tours are top-rated, and the Phelps Mansion Museum's current owners host many public events here. Number 7. Olana Mansion This is one of the most visited mansions in upstate New York. This 1872 home in Columbia County incorporates a mishmash of architectural styles to best reflect the owner's love of world travels. The mansion of painter Frederick Church was built to take advantage of the breathtaking views of the Hudson Valley in the distance. Many of his most famous paintings depicted the valley and the Hudson River itself. Tours of the mansion and grounds are extremely popular, and many interesting public events are planned throughout the year. If you ever pay a visit, don't forget to inquire about the four teapots perched atop the tower. Number 6. Morris Jumel Mansion Built in 1765 by British military officer Roger Morris, he and his wife, Mary Philippe A. Morris, lived there until the Revolutionary War ten years later in 1775. The Morris Jumel Mansion served as a military headquarters for the British and the Americans during the war. The mansion was the setting for many historical dramatic events, most notably, Eliza Bowen Jumel's marriage to then ex-Vice President Aaron Burr. Eliza married Stephen Jumel until his untimely death in a carriage accident. Because of the mystery surrounding her husband's passing, elites speculated that Eliza may have had something to do with it. Former U.S. Presidents John Adams, Thomas Jefferson, and John Quincy Adams, as well as U.S. Founding Father Alexander Hamilton, have visited the Morris Jumel Mansion. The Morris Jumel Mansion is now open to the public as a museum. Number 5. Joseph Raphael de Lamar House Another Beaux-Arts mansion was designed by the renowned architect C. P. H. Gilbert. Construction on the de Lamar House began in 1902 and was completed in 1905. 
The De La Mar House, located in Midtown, just down the street from some of the finest New York City boutique hotels, is the ideal place to end your New York City tour to mansions, and be close to where you'll rest your head for a good night's sleep. Initially built for Dutch-born merchant seaman Joseph Rafael de la Mar, the mansion now houses Poland's Consulate General in New York, owing to its proximity to the United Nations. The de la Mar house retains much of its original intricate decor and hosts many dignitaries worldwide. A wonderful musical evening honoring the birthday of renowned Polish composer Friedrich Franciszek Chopin was recently held at the Polish Consulate General. Number 4. Emily Vanderbilt Sloan White Mansion The EVSW Mansion is one of the last remaining Gilded Age mansions, and its location overlooking Central Park is ideal. Emily Thorne Vanderbilt Sloan White, Railroad Baron Cornelius Vanderbilt's granddaughter, lived on the ninth floor, which included a garden and a rooftop terrace. Designed by the same architects who oversaw the Grand Terminal project, it was initially built in 1905 for R. Livingston Beekman, former governor of Rhode Island. The EVSW has worn many hats throughout its history. The most interesting was the Yugoslavian mission during the Cold War. This time, the EVSW had a rubberized room to counter wiretaps during top-secret discussions. The Emily Vanderbilt Sloan White Mansion at 854th Fifth Ave is for sale and listed for $50 million. Number 3. Carnegie Mansion This historic home is on 91st Street and Fifth Ave in Manhattan's Upper East Side. The renowned industrialist Andrew Carnegie lived in the 1902-built Carnegie Mansion until he died in 1919. Then, his wife, Louise, continued to live there until her death in 1946. The mansion is now called the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum, which was opened there in 1976. Now it's open for tours regularly. Despite Andrew Carnegie's request that the mansion be kept as simple as possible, the mansion is known for being the first to have a steel frame and its own Otis elevator and central heating. The house is separated from 91st Street by a grassy lawn, and it has a small garden on its west. A townhouse to the east of the mansion was purchased by Carnegie shortly after its completion in 1905 as a house for his daughter. Number 2. Bolt Castle This is one of upstate New York's most popular mansions. Thousands of people have visited this island mansion over the years. The home was a love token built by George Bolt, the millionaire general manager of the Waldorf Astoria Hotel. His wife, Louise Carer Bolt, was the recipient of this tender souvenir. Unfortunately, she died in 1904 before the house was completed, and Bolt abandoned it. The mansion, which was supposed to be one of the largest private residences in the United States, sat abandoned and forlorn in the middle of the St. Lawrence River for nearly 75 years before preservationists came to its assistance. Today, tours demonstrate the extreme opulence and luxury of the Bolt's intended happy home. Number 1. Bartow Pell Mansion the Bartow Pell Mansion is located on the northern end of Pelham Bay Park, just east of Van Cortlandt Park. The mansion, the last surviving estate from the 19th century in Pelham Bay Park in the Bronx, now functions as a museum and hosts various events. The house and estate were first built in 1654 as the Robert and Maria Lorillard Bartow House. The home was once owned by the Lords of the Manor of Pelham and was later enlarged, renovated, and reconditioned in the federal style. The current home was constructed between 1836 and 1842. Various activities are available, including live onstage productions of Sherlock Holmes, A Scandal, weddings, group outings, and youth learning programs. The Bartow Pell Mansion in Bohemia always has something entertaining going on. So that's all for today's video. If you made it this far, click the subscribe button and hit the bell icon for more awesome content. Thanks for watching.